Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil 2 Remake. This is episode 2, and we are now in the RPD station. Leon's got his outfit, and we've got our knife. Also, where is Marvin? He was still talking last time, but I don't actually know where he is in this room. Also, before we head out of the main hall, one thing I want to check is... Let's take out the Samurai Edge, and I just want to compare, you know, the faster draw. Like, that seems to be the same, so maybe hers doesn't actually do anything special. Aside from look cool. Leon's actually seems to aim faster. But I think it's just a... It's just an animation thing, it's not actually slower. So I don't think Jill's does anything special. Unlike Chris's, which has the extra accuracy. Then again, I don't actually know if Chris's actually is more accurate, if it just has that as its design thing. Can I examine? That's the other thing I didn't check yet. Okay, you can still examine things up close. Custom kendo. It's got the little medallion. So pretty much looking... Exactly as it should. It looks a lot like the Airsoft version they made of this not too long ago. Or I guess remade, since it's actually an older design. Alright, so let's store that. I suppose the main advantage is that it has an extra 3 capacity, but it's not really a big deal. We're going to stick with the default. Alright, another green herb. So let's combine those into a pile of powder. Mixed herb, GG. But first, actually, I'm going to deposit my first aid spray. I don't think we'll need it just yet. Hopefully. I say after I already used one. Now, apparently this game still does give you a ranking at the end, so I wonder if it still penalizes you for using first aid sprays. Alright, I didn't really get too much further past this hallway when I did the one shot. I have too much mouth, and I must scream. Still want to know what the deal with this guy is. How did he get impaled on that pipe? Alright, he's probably not getting back up. Wasn't this... Wasn't this door unlocked? No. Okay, that's the confiscated items. It's the door around the corner that's unlocked. Let's just plank that up. I don't really want to keep the planks in my inventory blocking useful storage space. Alright, she's gonna get in. Uh, I think she pounced me last time I left her out here, so let's take care of her before we go in that room. in the neck. Now, I guess we should use the knife to finish them off, since it's a lot easier to do now that I don't have to switch to it. 
I've seen from other people who played the one-shot demo. I gotta remember that they can just grab your legs when they're down. I was gonna say that I've seen from other people who did the one-shot demo. That with the knife, you can really just like hack off limbs pretty easily. Alright, not this time, lady. She's gonna keep grabbing me in the same way. But yeah, if you like, you smack them in the arm a couple times, their arm will just fall off. Alright, hopefully she won't get back up. Record of events. Alright, I already read this one, but we'll read it again. Returning the station into a temporary shelter due to the massive sudden outbreak. All per police personnel have been instructed to make the safety of the citizens their top priority as we try to accommodate as many of them as possible. One of the refugees attacked us in the middle of the night, resulting in the death of one officer and injuring three others. The person in question was quickly restrained. We believe this was simply a case of someone snapping under intense stress. A mob attacked the station today, resulting in a number of casualties. Few survivors were able to make it safely behind the emergency shutters, but surrounded as we are, it'll be hard for any of us to escape this place. We're not sure if we can fix any of our comm equipment, so we remain cut off from the outside world. There was another clash on the west side of the station around 1 p.m. Twelve people died, and there was only a handful of survivors left. Everything is falling into disarray here. So, in the backstory of the original, one of the main things that got the station overrun is that the mayor of Raccoon City tried to take a group of survivors out through the parking garage, and when they opened the doors, obviously a bunch of zombies swarmed in through there. Which is why there's so many zombies in the station. I don't know if that's still the case here, but it kind of sounds like that a mob attack the station is kind of their equivalent. Okay, got the map. So, all of these rooms that are marked in blue have already been cleared out. There's no more items to get in them. And that one's just chained, so I think we probably need some kind of bolt cutters for that. Alright. Okay, some more bullets. Got the very thirsty zombie here. You know... Being a rotting corpse, you really want something to drink sometimes. Ooh, there's that good random critical head explosion. Which should mean that he is not going to reanimate. Or, I guess, continue to be animating since he's already reanimated. Alright, no going this way. Which door is this? Is this the one we just... No, that leads into the operations room. And that leads to the records room, which requires the club key. So that whole section we can't get into right now. Okay, here's the office. So that's the door that... wait. I think that's the door that leads into the hallway where we were before. Oh, got a one-armed police officer here. I was gonna try to hack off one of his legs, but then he immediately bounced me. I do love that their hat flies off when you shoot them, though. Which just makes you wonder, like, staggering around like a zombie and lying on the floor, how is his hat even staying on? Alright, get my knife back, which is almost broken. Though even in the demo, I did see another knife that I could have picked up. So, I guess we'll find a bunch of those. Alright, we got... Gunpowder. So this game also apparently has the gunpowder mixing system from RE3, where you could actually make different kinds of gunpowder, depending on how you mix it. Unlike the one in Resident Evil 7, where it was just using chem fluid with different kinds of gunpowder. So you can see if we use two, we get handgun ammo. If we use high-grade gunpowder plus gunpowder, we get shotgun shells, and two high-grade equals the magnum ammo. There's not a lot of ammo left around the station, so make good use of any gunpowder you find. Different guns require different ammo. It's a very obvious statement there. 
So pay attention when you're combining things or you won't get what you need. So that's neat that they brought that back from Resident Evil 3. And gives us another another little item to keep an eye out for. Alright, so this is the office where Marvin Brana would normally be. Well, dead Marvin Brana. He would be right in that spot where this guy is, so I guess they've swapped him out. And this is where you'd even see the cutscene of his skin turning gray, and then he'd get up as a zombie. Alright, we got another safe here. I have a feeling this guy's gonna get up, but maybe not yet. Definitely heard a thump. What do we got here? Operation report. September 28, 2.30 a.m. It's down to just me and three others. No weapons, no ammo, and too many skirmishes have drained us mentally and physically. We're not going to make it. Officer Phillips once suggested we escape through the sewers. Apparently there's a secret tunnel under this place left over from its museum days. Why would a museum have a secret tunnel? As if that just explains it. I brushed her idea off before, but now it's not sounding all that bad. Yeah, there's no proof that even a tunnel or that sewers aren't infested with zombies, but I don't want to sit here and wait to die either. It's a long shot, but I'm going to try to find out what I can about that tunnel. Of course, the tunnels into the sewers maybe not the safest place, considering, as we'll learn later, that's where the T-virus outbreak originated from. I don't think that's really a spoiler to say that. It's not really a major plot point. Rookie's first assignment. Leon S. Kennedy, we're putting you on a very special case for your first assignment. Your mission is to unlock your desk. The key to your success is in the initials of our first names. Input the letters in order of our desks. There are two locks, one on each side of your desk. Wow, that's, that's a lot to figure out. So we have to look at all their names and then write down the number of their desks in order. Two locks, one on each side of your desk. Make sure you get them both. Basically, your first task is to remember your fellow officer's names, but you figured that much out, right? Good luck, Leon. By the way, it might take a little work to get Scott to give you a straight answer. Scrawls in a corner between drops of blood. Be glad you're not here, Ricky. Well... I don't suppose Marvin could have just given us the answer to this when we met him. Alright, so let's see. So we need the initials. I guess just the first name initials? Okay, so all the decorations are still kind of here. There's just not a bunch of party hats on the desks like there was in the original. <laughs> Okay, so there's Marvin Brana. Sorry, let me read that note again just to... Input the letters in order of our desks. Okay. Okay, so there's three desks on this side, three desks on that side. This is an easy puzzle. So Marvin Brana, Rita Phillips, this guy, uh, who is... trying to bite my face off, and my knife just broke. It made a shattering sound. So this is Scott. Right. I think he's down for the moment. Can never be too sure when they're going to stay down. Get your freaking foot out of the way, Scott. I like that there's physics, so I can actually kick his foot out of the way. Alright, so his name is George Scott. So is that just M-R-G? Okay. So I imagine whatever is in here is not great, but still, it's something we can get. Elliot Edward, David Ford, then we've got a missing 
name on the end here. Oh, no, there it is. Neil. Alright, so E-N... D-E-N. And then we've got our first puzzle solved of the game. Except I am... wrong? Is there not a D? Oh, it probably loops back around. So, one, two, three, and then three, four, five? Or four, five, six? So, N, E, D. Let's try that. Alright. High capacity magazine for the Matilda. So, I guess this is an upgrade. And not just, like, a, we have one better magazine. There we go. Awkwardly jutting out of the bottom, so now we have 24 rounds. That's a good start for upgrades. I like that, too, because from what I heard, there is actually a couple upgrades for each gun, and not just, you know, one for a few of them, like there was in the original. Sounds like the guy in the office got up. I really do like how their head just deforms as you hit it with bullets. Like, look at him. He's just turning into a shredded chunk of meat. I was kind of hoping he would drop something. Otherwise, that was kind of a waste of ammo. Alright, so we got our upgrade for our handgun, which is nice. And this is a spade key. Okay, that leads back into the main hall, so I was totally thinking of the wrong office. In the original game, I'm pretty sure it was the East office, where it was like, Welcome to the Forest Leon. But there was a wall of lockers along here that isn't here, so that's probably in the East office. Alright, well that was a neat little side distraction. Okay, this is the safety deposit room. Now, there was a key card a weapons key card in the demo that was in the room we cl climbed through the window for. So that's not here. It appears that the keypad for the locker's terminal is missing a few keys. I suggest that the person responsible for this mess find some spare keys and fix this right now. You know who you are, bastard. Who else would fuck it up this badly? Alright, so yeah. This thing is missing a few keys. Only missing two. So, without those, I'm guessing we can't open any of these electronic locks. That thing, which will increase our inventory. Shotgun ammo. There's the shotgun, which needs the weapon keycard. Hmm. Yeah, these textures are looking a little blurry. I might have to turn up the texture resolution. I haven't actually adjusted the graphics yet. What is that? That looks like a... A roll of film, which might actually be what it is. And there's another knife. There is some gunpowder. So, nothing much we can do in here yet. Do this. You can do this. It seems like Leon's little voice lines that he throws out are a little quieter in this than they were in the demo, so they're not as obtrusive. I felt like in the demo he just kind of talked too much when you're aiming your gun. Alright, so this... This was one of the save rooms in the original game. And there's still an item box here and a typewriter, so I guess it's still a save room. But I wanted to, again... Do a little soundtrack swap here just to see the original save room theme. Ah. Classic. Again, I really like that they seem to have gone with a very kind of memorable hand. That's really not the word I intended, but 
it's, you know, they're definitely appreciating the roots of the game that they're remaking, which not a lot of companies do, but then again, a lot of companies are not the same company that made the original game. Whereas people who actually worked on the original RE2 are still making this one. But yeah, I am a sucker for throwbacks in, you know, sequels and remakes. Which is why when I backed the Resident Evil 2 board game, which sadly still has not arrived yet, thanks to delays in shipping, but when I backed that I also bought the Retro Pack, which has kind of game tiles that look more like the areas from the original game, as well as item cards that look like the inventory from the original game. So I love that kind of stuff. Film contains evidence. Do not leave out. What is this? Oh, it's a red herb. Looking very purple. Alright. So that'll give us a full heal. My health's doing good. I just don't have a lot of bullets right now. Alright, so we've got the developing fluid here. So if we had the film from that locker, we could develop it here. Medicinal benefits of herbs. Humans have used herbs to treat sickness and disease since the dawn of time. In this book, we will explore three such herbs native to the Arclay Mountains. Green herbs have the ability to heal basic injuries, while blue herbs have long been used to treat poisoning. So I guess poison is still going to be in here, presumably from the giant spiders, and possibly, I think the ivy has poisoned you as well. As for red herbs, they are visually appealing, they offer no medicinal benefits, or so it was thought until recently. It's well known that combining herbs together produces blends that heighten the herbs' effects, but, has long been dis but it has been discovered that red herbs can play a big role when mixed properly. According to one doctor of Asian medicine, mixing blue and red herbs together produces a blend that will strengthen one's constitution. What does that mean? I wonder if that's a permanent health increase, because that's new. Mixing blue and red didn't actually do anything before until you mixed it with a green as well. Truly, we have only begun to realize the full potential of these herbs and their ability to heal the human body. Further research is sure to yield even more fascinating results. Alright. So, I'll deposit my green for now, and I'll deposit the gunpowder as well. Just for the moment. Okay, we'll make a save. Okay, two more bullets there. There we go. What? There's that sweet dismemberment. Son of a bitch. Alright. Giving me the zombie booty. Didn't really ask for that, but... So you can shoot the zombie's legs off to make them less mobile, but that seems like a waste of ammo. Ah, oh, shit! Yeah, you crawl away. Alright, I should probably turn off the old soundtrack. I could play through the whole game like this, but... You know, we'll stick with the original, or... I guess the... Remake's original soundtrack for now. You bastard. I don't even know which one of them he's you bastarding at now. Ooh, there we go. Their head really just pops like a rotten melon when you get one of those crits. Alright, so this is around where I ran out of time in the demo. I just kind of sprinted through here, and here we need a valve to turn off the steam. Which, what is this area? Um, okay, those are marked red because they have the locked safes in them. Oh, 
guess he doesn't have anything for me. That was exactly where the demo ended for me, as I opened that locker and a body fell out. Alright, some Steel Boy shotgun shells. Nothing. And what's this? Portable safe. Another thing that I don't have the combination for. Portable safe instructions. Press a button to light up its corresponding lamp. Light them all to open the safe. The buttons must be pressed in a certain order. Pressing a single button out of order will cause all the lights to go out, and you will need to start the sequence over again. Okay, so that sounds like one I can just puzzle out by fooling around with it. And we got another lock there. So it seems like there's going to be a lot of little locked lockers and stuff like that to get ammo and stuff from. <clears throat> ammo, weapon upgrades, healing items, that sort of thing. Okay, another red herb here. So, nothing else in this hallway. This is the hallway, I believe, where the statue pushing, pushing puzzle would have been originally. Okay, I see. You just have to figure out which ones light up the one next to them, and they need to go... Um, counterclockwise. Okay. So which one of these is that one? So. Oops. Wait. Which one is the bottom right? Are these changing every time I mess it up? Okay. Okay, one, two, three. So, one, two, nope. One, two, three, four, no. Oops. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Ah, shit. Alright. I'm starting to memorize this. Sorry, I'm kind of slow with these. So there's no indications. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, God. I'm so stupid. <laughs> and then... One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. God damn it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Are you kidding me? I did the exact same mistake twice. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm glad it plays a little tune when you unlock your safe. A small part of some sort. All right. So I got... Oh, it's a spare key. There we go. I got one of the buttons. Hmm. What the? All right, let's go up to the next floor. Still no sign of a liquor. 
is good because I wouldn't want to find a liquor with this pistol, honestly. <clears throat> Another locked safe. <sighs> or locker. No. Oh, weird little mannequin shadow. Okay, so there's the spade key. Pretty important to have. Now I wonder... No, I can't break it and change the shadow. Heard some kind of like clanking gate. Now that what? is a liquor. Any tonguey boys around here? What's that? I think it's, I think it's a little vase. I thought it was a pepper shaker or pepper grinder, I guess. Anything here? To any survivors, consider this a gift for anyone still unfortunate enough to be alive. Keep your eyes peeled for these creepy fucks that look like they were skinned alive. Lickers, we call them. They're blind as bats, but their hearing more than makes up for that. As long as you don't run around like a total idiot, guns a-blazing, you should probably slip right by them. Probably. Either way, make like my grandpa and creep around as slow as possible around him, yeah? Anyway, not that I want to go, but duty calls. That, and I've got a friend to avenge. David. Alright, David Ford. So I suppose we might find out a little bit more about the fate of the named officers around the station. Because they had names and notes in the original game, but they didn't really... Didn't really ever get specifically mentioned by appearance. Okay, gunpowder. Planks that I don't have space for. I mean, really, I should turn back because I have a bunch of stuff that I can't get rid of right now, which means my inventory is not going to hold anything new if we find a key up here. I don't remember if there's a save room on the third floor. Okay, so this this is the C4. I remember this. So we need a detonator if we want to get through here. Some guy's scribblings. Damn, those corporate assholes. They cut me off. After all I've done for them. But if that's how it's going to be, so be it. I'm going to have a little fun of my own as the world goes to shit. I boarded all those filthy pigs up in a steel pen and set some C4. All I gotta do is detonate it, and it's sayonara, suckers. But it's no fun if it's over too soon, so maybe I'll give that one raving loon something to really squeal about. Yeah, maybe I'll give him a little toy and tell him, Kill the guy next to you and I'll spare the others. I wonder what he'll do. You yell about justice and pride, but how many times did you go against me, your own superior? Yeah, you're such a good cop. So good you had to die. Man, this is fun. I need some music for this. Well, I know whose deranged scribblings those are, but I won't mention it just yet. Ah, there we go. Got a hip pouch, so now I got two more slots, which means I don't have to go back to an item box just yet. Also, is this like the sculpture storage from the old museum? You think I could shoot out his knees so that he drops? All right, so this is the library. Leon, it's Marvin. I need you back here ASAP. Are you okay, Marvin? I've got something to show you. It's important. Copy that. I'll be right there. No getting across this gap. I can't just jump over it. This is an RE4. No, that's not a green herb. That's just a flower vase. Are these from the museum? I don't know of a lot of museums that have a library, but these look like some pretty old books.
a lot of zombies down there. Uh, I don't think I have a shot on here because of where the gun is. So we can move these around, which I guess I would do to close that gap there. I also like how the bodies don't clip through each other, they actually stack up like that. It's a good little effect. Alright, Marvin says he needs us back in the main hall. So, probably means I don't want to- oh, well. Guess I can't do anything with this one until I remove the jack. Oh, no, you're not done yet. Big boy, aren't you? Oh, what the hell? Sit down, son. All right, caution health. Ten bullets. Not in the best situation right this second. All right, so I guess we'll head back to the main hall. Well, let's see. The library does connect into the main hall. And we do have the spade key so we can open up that shortcut. Alright Marvin, what's up? Chunky 90s yes. laptop. I knew she'd make it. Oh, you know her? Yeah. Name's Claire. I came into town with her. You can get to that courtyard through the second floor, east side. <laughs> I'm on it. Thanks, Lieutenant. <laughs> All right. So Claire has reached the station. A little behind Leon. But we do have a bunch of spade doors we can open as well. Let's see, okay, so here's the other this is insane. side of this room. So we don't really need to go in here, because we've already been in there. And Marvin, uh, don't let that door open. There's, there's a few zombies in there. Alright, so let's dump some of this stuff. Again, don't need my gunpowder right this second. Don't need the shotgun ammo or the herb. Hmm, might be worth making one stack of ammo though. Okay, and it'll fill up my magazine. So I guess I can't get back into the east side through here. Which means I'm gonna have to probably go down the stairs if I want to get back over there. Because he said that she's on the east side. Let's see. So we can get to the records room with our spade key. Which might be worth going in there. The game does give us objectives to actually track down, but... I don't think we're on any sort of time limit to meet up with Claire, so don't feel like rushing straight over there. OK, 
Okay, so the records room is over here. Oh, that's a club key. Whoops, I probably should have looked at the symbol before I actually rushed over here. Okay. So the library did have another door, but we can't get there until we can fix the jack. Or, wait, it looked there was a ladder, so there might actually be something else in the library to find. Dial lock, valve... Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to go through the second floor. Which should lead us closer to Claire, through that door. Because I guess there's not really anything else I can do right this second. So again, just want to reiterate, I am enjoying this a fair bit so far. It just feels kind of good to play. Well, being kind of a mix of familiar and new as a person who's played RE2 a fair bit. I think in the course of recording that LP, I probably played through the game like seven times, both before and during. Just to make sure I was familiar with everything and had everything unlocked. That sort of thing. Okay, so you can actually discard keys. You don't have to bring them back. So that's nice. That's kind of a an upgrade from just, this key has no more use. Would you like to discard it? So you can actually get rid of non-essential items if you want to free up your inventory. And the waiting room also has a safe, so we're going to have to find a lot of safe combinations. So that's the sound of a helicopter, so I think we'll probably run into that pretty shortly. An art article, the red stone. The ruby that captivated Edward the Black Prince, the pearl that the Queen of the Nile milked dry, the diamond that led a queen to her guillotine. There is no end to the number of tales related to the appeal of jewels. This mysterious red stone is simply the latest to sparkle among them. Like those other jewels, this one's origin is unknown. It's said that it once adorned a noblewoman's jeweled box and was even dedicated to a wise king. This fall, this stone that's long been shrouded in legend will be on display during auction. There are sure to be many eager enthusiasts there. But, dear reader... One would do well to approach with care, for devilry lies in the beauty's shadow. This jewel has turned caring nobles who love their subjects into despots more terrible than Caligula. Caligula. And we have the tales to prove it. Seriously, it's precisely because these jewels are bathed in blood that their luster stirs something in the hearts of people everywhere. So that's just a little kind of backstory bit about the red jewels that I guess we're still going to need. Okay, there's our weapons locker card. So that'll get us the shotgun. Anything else in this room? A statue's left arm, alright. Guess that'll come in handy. Let me examine this first. Okay. I mean, this seems pretty obvious, right? But I have a feeling it's just going to trigger a trap. Or it's simply not the right one. It looks like maybe we gotta combine something with it first. And then maybe it'll let go of the key. So we'll hold on to that for now. Ow. 
All right. A helicopter has hit the station. So I guess we didn't really get the cutscene or anything for how that happened, but then again, that makes sense because the cutscene was kind of out of place. Essentially, somebody is waiting for the helicopter to pick them up, and then they get tackled by zombies, at which point they spray them, the helicopter with their submachine gun, and it crashes. Claire! Hold on! I'll be right there! Leon, did you see that shit? That was crazy. Claire! It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah. of nowhere. I'm in one piece. Thanks for asking, Claire. Do you have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? You know, just surviving. That's good. Yeah. Any luck with your brother? No. No, I've been locked out of the station this there, whole time. Don't lose hope. I'm sure we're gonna find him. Damn it. You know what that means? Yeah. Dinner time. Claire, I think you should go. Don't worry about me, Leon. You take care of yourself. Hey, you need to go. Now! Hey, let's get through this. Both of us. Hey, I'll buy you a beer when this is over. I'm surrounded by zombies. Marvin, do you... Copy. Mar... All right, so there's the bolt cutters. Gonna need those. Damn it! So this should lead back into the east side of the station, because I remember this shortcut hallway out here. Also, in the original game, the crashed helicopter was the reason that you needed the C4, but here it's already set up. I'm surprised that they also added in some. Oh, jeez, flaming zombie. I was going to say that I'm surprised they added in some awkward flirting between Leon and Claire. Wasn't really much of that in the original. Um, let's see. Okay, that's where we came in. Art room, fire escape. Yeah, the fire escape will lead us back down to where we started. And I guess the other half of this hallway is blocked off. Oh, hello. Kinda was hoping the fire would kill you. Just Are you kidding me? None of those hit? Can I turn the fire alarm off? No. But it looks like there's no going through here. Oh, he's back up. Grab this herb, please, Leon. Leon, grab the herb. God damn it. Took him a little too long to grab that. Is that even locked? Alright, well, let's head back into the station. Yep, and this is pretty much where we were when we Shit. ran into Elliot. He's still half a torso there. I guess he hasn't zombified. What the? Okay. One shot to the knee took him down. Alright, so... What other locked doors were there around here? 
I guess there's that door in the room where Elliot came through. I don't think we're going to get through there again. I suppose there wasn't really any other doors. It's just the fuse that we need. I think he's good for now. Okay, there's the fuse. Oh, no, that's a flash grenade. Guaranteed to daze and stun enemies within its effective radius. So I would think that's not too effective on a zombie. But it sounds like we can still do the thing where you stuff it in an enemy's mouth when they try to bite you. Okay, some more handgun bullets. Make mincemeat of his face. So what do we have in this office? Okay, and there's the valve. I love just finding a lot of items and you're like, immediately, I know where to use that. And some high-grade gunpowder. So probably want to save that to make some magnum rounds. Okay. So that is the fuse, it looks like. Um, heal up to full, grab the fuse. I like how it's like electrical part, a rod-shaped electrical part, but then if I search it, it'll turn into a fuse. So like the original games, there is still, you know, searching stuff will actually change up the name of the thing into what it actually is, if you examine it. Okay, some gunpowder. So if I combine that with the high-grade gunpowder, I can make shotgun shells. But I think we're going to call it for the second episode here. We're going to... If I can get back to the main hall... Oh, jeez. really need to find myself another knife. I'm hoping this will open the shutters. Wait, what is... Okay, that's just planks. Well, this kind of prevents the main hall from being a safe room anymore. All right. So I think that'll do it for episode 2 of Let's Play Resident Evil 2 Remake. And I think things are coming along. We're starting to see some new stuff. We've got a bunch of puzzle items that I actually know the use of. So, we're in for a good time. I think next time we'll get the shotgun and use this valve handle and see what kind of new stuff that brings us. But until then, I've been Shadefire, this is Resident Evil 2, and I hope you'll join me next time. Take care, everyone, and stay safe.